At 74 years of age, most people would be thinking about retirement, but not Len Silva, former rider, current promoter and owner of the Rye House Rockets. We spend the evening with Len to find out why he's still in love with Speedway. I've been around a long time, um, and yet, to be honest, every match is a fresh and new match to me. I, don't, I, I tend not to look back, I tend to look forwards. Um, and I think because Speedway involves me with lots and lots of young people and looking forwards, I think it's kept me mentally alert and mentally young. I hope so anyway. How old are you today? 16. 16. All right, Leo. Where'd you come from, Leo? Roxbourne. Oh, you're a local boy? His dad's yeah. actually young. I raced professionally for 12 years as a young man. I started when I came out of the Air Force when I was 20. I did my national service, which everybody had to do in those days. And uh, I raced until I was 32, at which time I had quite a bad accident and I'd got involved in the management at Hackney Speedway. And so I came, you know, 100% into the management side at that time. I mean, everything happened. Have you? Yeah. yeah. I hope they've got your extra wages for that. Oh yeah, got me. Yeah, you got it. I'm too old in the tube not to be, don't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was here from 74 until 86, uh, a 12 year period. Ran a very successful promotion here at that time. Very happy period. I was running Hackney until 1984. I sold my Hackney interest and then I subsequently sold uh, the Rias interest because I had started a ski holiday company, Silver Ski Holidays and that was taking up all of my time and Speedway financially wasn't treating me very well at that time so it made sense to devote all my efforts to the skiing business which I did and that became very successful and so I stayed out of Speedway for a little while. No, I think. Okay. Peter then still believes on the hands-on approach and on race day he does everything. Thanks, right. The administration, organising the track staff, making sure the riders are ready on time. He even does the parade. But I'm sure in his younger day, he could have been a bit of a singer if he'd put his mind to it. <laughs> then again, maybe not. Well, there's certainly no lacking the enthusiasm from Len as he introduces the riders on the parade. Anybody from the island? Oh, you all over there. Nice to have you with us. I hope you don't have too enjoyable a time tonight, but nonetheless, enjoy the racing. Until 1999, when the supporters club here at Rye House formed a committee to restart the Rye House team. And any number of people, about 100 people, put in 50 quid a piece to finance it. And I said, well, I'll do a bit better than that. I'll put in a couple of grand and sponsor the team, which I did. Then when I came home, I started getting involved. It wasn't long before the bug bit and uh, things uh, just happened at the time. The stadium became available for sale. And I thought, hell, why not? meeting that we went to involved the Rye House Rockets and the Isle of Wight and certainly racing wise there was plenty to keep the fans entertained that night. This was never entered into by myself uh, or for that matter the other people with me uh, as a money-making project that wasn't the object. The object was to run a successful professional speedway from which we could get a lot of personal satisfaction and pleasure and we devoted our time and energy into making the stadium nice, the team right, doing everything that I'd always dreamed of and I couldn't afford to do it and I could afford to do it so I did it and here we are now with an extremely pleasant stadium, a very good team, wonderful track with wonderful racing uh, so it's perfect for me, it's perfect. Len prides himself on trying to bring along young English riders to the team. Edward Kennett is one that he's particularly proud of. Steve Boxall is another and Tommy Allen. There is a strong swell of, of uh, English boys that I've been involved with in uh, coming up through. Len's still confident his team will be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. We've still put in some bloody good performances uh, and we're in the playoffs. 
So we've still every chance of winning the league, and we certainly haven't given up a battle. With so many alternative sources of entertainment, why does Len think people still continue to come and watch live Speedway? Four riders in a race, every one of them risking his life. Really risking his life. Risking serious injury uh, for your entertainment. That has a certain, I don't know what, but it has a certain thrill about it, a certain excitement which is not duplicated in any other sport or any other activity, not to the same degree. It also has very personal involvements uh, for the people. People get to know the riders and all about them, so they get very close to them, they get very close to the team, and it becomes very addictive, and it is very addictive. I've been addicted to it all my life, since I was 14 years of age, and I'm now 74. So for 60 years, I've been addicted to this game. And I'm just as addicted now as I was 60 years ago. So obviously no signs of retirement for Len Silver just yet. But is there one particular reason why he continues to provide speedway racing at Rye House? I get a great kick out of presenting things successfully. And by that I don't mean winning everything. I mean presenting an evening of speedway entertainment which is entertaining and exciting. I get a great kick out of that. Just as I got a kick out of racing, I was always recognised as an entertaining rider. I played to the crowd a bit. I wasn't just a rider who rode. I've always believed Speedway, from the rider's point of view, and from promoting from that point, it's, it's, it's an entertainment. And uh, it's part of show business. And I've always looked upon it, both as a rider and as a promoter, in that way. So do tell your friends, do come along yourselves. Thank you for coming this evening. Now let's sit back and enjoy a little bit of practice. Thank you.